Today there is a lunar eclipse and full moon in Taurus. Pretty intense energies going on with this lunar eclipse. I'm Marina Orms here with your Astro Vibe for Saturday, October 28th. And uh, eclipses, of course, form when the uh, full moon or new moon is in the same plane as the Earth's orbit around the sun, so that uh, we get a, a, the the blocking of light in the case of the sun or the uh, blocking of the moon, right, in the case of a lunar eclipse. So... Um, so with this lunar eclipse and today I chose the theme investing in your heart because we do have these intense bigger picture evolutionary energies going on and a lot of people have been um, experiencing a deeper uh, uh, awareness of some karma or old patterns, right? Things shifting. And that is how evolution works. We um, become aware of where things are rooted in the past, where, how they got there in the first place, right? And then um, we can uh, change them to step into new skin, to new ways of being, new ways of uh, sharing and shining in the world. And with uh, some of that showing up in the world and during this um, eclipse, during this full moon, which follows the solar eclipse in Libra from two weeks ago, right? That was the first eclipse. <laughs> so we're, we're working on the, the, the Libran theme of relationships and partnership and cooperation and peace and what does peace mean? Who do we need to become to create peace? What is peace? In one of my videos uh, over the last couple of weeks, I was sharing about how peace is a process and it isn't something that um, we reach and then and then everything's okay from then on, right? Like the happily ever after <laughs> scenario. Uh, peace is really like a moment, right? It's a moment when we feel peaceful, but we have to continue working on it because it's dynamic. So peace evolves, we evolve how we create peace and find that place of peace within ourselves is shifting and changing um, because to maintain peace, we have to grow, we have to change, we have to evolve. And that is the invitation of being human. So here we are with this Taurus eclipse. Taurus is a uh, earth sign. It has to do with normal, with routines, with stability, with uh, what are the rhythms of the earth and, you know, things that we can count on, things that we can depend on. And so those uh, are the types of things that are being highlighted. Um, also, resources. Um, and so when I say investing in your heart, we're thinking about what are we putting our energy into, right? Our efforts. And so um, the word investing is used when we put our money into something, but the word investing also means putting uh, something of value, right? Into uh, so it, putting it toward what is important to us. And so we invest, we put our energy towards something. We uh, affirm it. We we uh, ask for uh, to have, you know, it's like feeding yourself. Um, when you put food in your body, you're investing in your own well-being and, uh, and homeostasis, right, and growth. And when you uh, put food of some sort, right, what is that food? It could be your thoughts. It could be your beliefs. It could be your money. It could be your time, right? These are all things of value um, that you can be putting toward something that is important to you. And so think about how you are investing your time, your precious resources of your thoughts, your feelings, um, the uh, energy that you have in the day, and what are you putting it into? And, and so um, we're thinking about how we can contribute to a bigger picture of a peaceful world, right? A balanced world, a world that is in, in balance, 
uh, not through um, sacrifice and compromise, although, you know, compromise has its value, but, but think about the ways that you have compromised in the past or settled for something that isn't um, really serving your needs and how you need to grow and change to, uh, to participate or experience that, um, that feeling of having the things you want without having to compromise or maintain a peace, right? So, so if you are, um, sacrificing your own needs to maintain a peace, then yes, that's a kind of peace. It's a kind of stability, right? Sometimes we might say, okay, I'll give up this in order to have, um, you know, the feeling of peace in my home or the feeling of peace in my workplace. Like I'll, uh, I'll sacrifice something that uh, I need or something that is good for me in order to uh, keep things even or calm, right? To avoid um, conflict. So that works, that might work for that moment, right? But then ultimately what we, the work of peace is the work when we continue to uh, grow and find a new peace, a new balance that, hey, you know, maybe we can have peace and calm and avoid conflict, but also my needs are more fully met. Or also, we have found a way that we can get along. Um, we we can reach some agreements that work better for both sides um, or all sides. And so that's the evolution of peace. It's a dynamic process and how we need to grow and create more functional kinds of balance um, or ways of coexisting, right? So um, so that is the work. And what we, of, of course, are seeing some of these themes play out in the world and asking ourselves, what, where are we compromising? Where are we um, pushing our beliefs onto someone else? And, and so we're being asked collectively to look at and think about what is the ultimate goal here, right? What, what is it we want to accomplish and want to achieve? And how can we um, invest our time and energy and love and care in ways that create those ultimate out outcomes. Um, maybe not just the short-term win, but also like working toward that bigger picture where there is real uh, peace and harmony and ability to work together. Because when we can work together, what we can create together is even more powerful um, and sustainable, which is a great word for uh, a key word for Taurus, right? Taurus is that energy to, to keep going and keep create things that can be repeated and be depended upon. And so that, that, um, that idea of sustainability fits very well with Taurus. So, um, so, okay. So with this eclipse, I keep saying how intense it is. <laughs> it's, um, it, it, it is happening in Taurus with this moon opposing the sun, that is the definition of a full moon, and um, also with several other planets involved. So we have um, uh, two planets in Scorpio, along with the sun, Mercury, and Mars, um, forming a conjunction with each other <laughs> uh, in Scorpio. So Mars is the warrior planet in Scorpio, which is the sign of transformation, um, bringing transformation, whether we like it or not. Um, and Mercury in there as well um, in that with that Scorpionic energy, um, meaning that words and communication and ideas and ideals can come into this experience of um, a disturbance in, in the balance of things. And so um, ideas as weapons, um, words as weapons, and the ways that we um, uh, experience aggression, microaggression, uh, ways that uh, we're being pressured to not be ourselves or not say what we think. And um, so responding to that means 
it's taking the higher ground of those energies. And so what does it look like to, to um, embody the higher ground of the possibilities of Mercury and Mars in Scorpio conjunct the sun in Scorpio um, for this lunar eclipse. And um, that is going to look like really uh, deepening within ourselves to ask ourselves, what is my truth? To be really honest and, um, and with ourselves so that we can be authentic in our ways of showing up in the world and uh, finding the words, connecting with the ideas that are truly important um, to us. And why is that important, right? Thinking about that bigger picture what kind of world we want to live in, what kind of life we want to have and anchoring in that because this uh, Scorpio energy is, is the energy of um, change. So that brings death to the old, right? Death to old ways of being, old habits and patterns, but it also means birth to new ones. So from the um, infinite, fertile potential of all you know infinite energy cosmic energy which could we could equate that to soil right so if you're growing a garden you have soil it's just dirt it's just something you stand on right but what is that soil when you put a seed into it right it becomes infinite potential it's the it's like this fertile source of future possibility. So that is the kind of thing we can access during this eclipse is that infinite possibility for what we can become, for what we are giving birth to. And that's what I mean about investing in your heart. It, it's putting, it, it's nurturing that little seed of what you want to create. So, um, you know, put, planting that seed in that soil, in that fertile, uh, um, infinite potential. And then you put the little, you know, sprinkle the water on it and put a little um, fertilizer and, you know, give it love and protect it from uh, things that might dig it up. And, you know, so the ways that we are taking care of and protecting the seed ideas of what it is we want to invest in, put our energy toward and create for the future really powerful time. And we are being asked, pushed to let go of um, any old patterns we have that do not serve the growth and the emergence of that future seed of possibility. So that is hard, right? It's like, wait, I know how this worked before. I want to just do it the way I know, but you can't because it doesn't work because the universe is asking you, uh, pushing you, forcing you, I don't know, to, um, to let go of some of those old habits, old patterns, old ways of being that feel more comfy, more familiar. It's like, no, it's time to transform. It's really time to release um, things that are not healthy for that seedling that you want to emerge and grow. Um, so, okay, so we've got Mars and Mercury in Scorpio opposing Jupiter in Taurus next to that full moon in Taurus. So Jupiter in Taurus, Jupiter is a planet that has to do with growth and expansion it deals with themes of abundance, but it's um, it also has to do with ways that we trust. So ways that we um, can expand by believing in something, by having faith in something. And so what are your beliefs? Looking at beliefs and how beliefs might be used, right? Um, with that opposition to Mars and Mercury, ideas being weaponized, and how um, beliefs can be used to manipulate, to create a, an illusion of what, what uh, you know, some faction may want us to believe or hear or adhere to because it, it, it's the promise of safety. 
It gives us the promise of, hey, if you just believe this thing, that's easy to get on board with. We'll we'll take care of you. Everything will be okay. But but this eclipse is really asking us to um, to connect with our own beliefs. It's like, um, no, you know, I don't have to just take what someone else handed to me as a as a solution, as something that is um, there to persuade me to uh, to get on board with something. No, I get to check in with my own beliefs. Hey, does that fit with with what it is I want to create with the future I'm imagining. So um, so checking in with yourself and again, some of that deeper, honest connection with what is really true and right for you and remembering um, the legacy of the warriors who have gone before you, right? Some some um, uh, fighters in the past who have brought change. Um, some of the, you know, just civil rights leaders, uh, leaders in changes for feminism and uh, women's rights, um, changes that bring about the promise of uh, you know, the country of the United States of America, which is to um, equality and freedom for all, right? So what what does that look like? How do we create that collectively? But also, how does that show up for you in your own life? And what does freedom look like for you? What does having your needs met look like for you? And um, this eclipse is really asking us to get clear about who we are, what we want and how we are investing in that. So with that Jupiterian uh, set of beliefs, asking yourself, do my beliefs align with this, this vision that, that the, I have for what is possible, the sustainability, the, the solution to the world's problems, right? Climate change and so on. Um, you know, what is what does it look like when that is solved? Not how do I fight against a person that I think is my enemy, but what does it look like when that problem gets solved? And how, how can we keep moving forward toward that without getting distracted by all the noise uh, and the drama of, you know, the infighting or the, um, you know, what someone, how someone is pushing your buttons or um, how, you know, just the different ways that we get distracted from where it is we're heading. And so when we choose to realign, reconfigure our beliefs so that we are um, really focusing on that big picture outcome that we want, where we're, and the thing about those outcomes is we don't, we don't really believe them on some level because we haven't experienced them yet, right? It's like, it's like, that's why we want it. That's why it's something that that's why it's a vision, right? It's not something we already have. And so whether that is, um, you know, a vision for your life or your career or your uh, marriage or your family, wh whatever the vision is for how you would like to experience that realm of life and your creative work, you know, and, and the disconnect between that and where you are now is that you're being asked to make a leap of faith, to believe in that thing that you haven't experienced yet. Because if you already, well, maybe you've experienced it in the past, but you're, you don't know how to consistently manifest it or how to, um, to uh, you know, how to connect with it reliably. So that's why you're working toward it. That's why it's a vision. A, a, a thing that you want to manifest. And as you um, are getting, you know, we get distracted by the here and now, because that's what we know. So in other words, um, this eclipse is inviting us to align our thoughts, beliefs, time, energy, feelings, care, caring, 
um, all, all the things that we have and are that have value to put those toward that thing that we have not experienced yet. So, so we need to imagine a world with climate change being solved, right? Right? What, what does that feel like? And, and you don't have to like believe in it 100% because there's, there, there is the world around us. There's reality around us saying, um, you know, here's, here's the problem. Here's another problem. Here's another problem. Here's another reason why, you know, things look really dire. That's there for sure. And, and we should, we need to acknowledge the places that need work and we need to be real about those. But this piece, this, that this eclipse is reminding us is saying, but can you, can you believe that that future outcome is possible? Because what if, and I, I you know, I don't have the answer to this, but what if it was all came down to your ability to imagine that that was possible and you have trouble imagining it's possible because you're getting distracted by all these things that are happening around you and all these ex, you know explanations and dire warnings and so on but what if what if we what if it all came down to can you can you actually believe in can you imagine a future with climate change solved, with people getting on board and solving their problems of how they're going to get along together and solve problems and bring in new solutions and innovate and reconfigure how our systems and our structures, which is what we're dealing with with the end of Pluto in Capricorn. I've done some other videos on the Pluto in Capricorn final degree, and uh, I'll probably do another one coming up here, but, um, and maybe I'll create a playlist for you that brings together, because this is so potent for us right now. We are in such a potent time of shift and change as we um, go through this process in 2023 and 2024 of moving through P Pluto in the final degrees of Capricorn, heading into the early degrees of Aquarius, retrograding back into Capricorn. We are uh, now with Pluto direct as of this eclipse. Pluto is direct and heading back toward Aquarius where it will enter in January of 2024. So, uh, so in other words, in the bigger picture, we are really at a potent time of shift, um, of um, having to come to terms with who we have been, reckoning with some of the things we've done that we may not feel great about, that may not have taken us in a great direction, but also, you know, it's just like our own personal things. It's like we did what we had to do to get where we are now. And now we get to make a decision about how we do things going forward. So let's not um, spend time dwelling on the mistakes that we've made. And the promise of Pluto and Aquarius is that we have an ability to reimagine the future and to really um, embody our principles, our values, the things that are important to us, and um, th this theme of, of equality and freedom and equal opportunity, that is the promise of this country, you know, really came out of a collective time of Pluto shifting from Capricorn to Aquarius back in the 1770s. So, so we're here again now, and the invitation of this time is to imagine the future. So however um, you can support yourself, imagine yourself, you know, nurturing that little seedling in that very fertile soil of infinite potential and putting your energy, your effort, your thoughts, right? You're, you, we don't even realize how much um, our thoughts are... Uh, happening unconsciously when we can choose to think differently about things. So this is one example, the ability to imagine the future we want. So for example, and this isn't the only problem you might be, you know, contemplating, but just climate change is such a 
big pervasive one that we can all relate to. So, um, so if you're imagining the solution, what is what does a world look like um, when the climate change issue has been resolved? How are people talking to each other? How are people working together? How are we um, uh, investing in infrastructure? How, what does it look like? And you don't have to know all the things, right? It might not be your area of expertise, but um, how, whatever that is that you can connect with, how are you taking steps in your life to believe in that, to invest in that, to participate in being part of the solution and not get um, just overwhelmed by the problem because what if it's what if it really does come down to your ability to believe and imagine that future and i don't know that it does or doesn't right but but that's the thing about being here at this time and being human is that we don't know and um and we have this choice to go forward and be creative and uh, live according to our truth, be joyful, be happy. And when we make that choice, uh, we do invest in, in the possibilities of the future and call that in. So that is uh, what I've got for you today with this eclipse, bringing it into your heart, bringing it into your life and what feels important and true to you. And how can you Take something about your the way that you live your life, and and you know I'm not talking about recycling, although that's great. <laughs> I'm not talking about joining a group or volunteering, although that's great. All of it is great. What I'm talking about is how can you get your thinking in alignment with the possibilities of the future. And that might mean letting go of some of the fears and some of the ways of operating from a place of fear that this eclipse may be bringing up for you to look at um, in whatever ways that is for you personally. So um, I'm Marina Orms. If you're interested in seeing where this eclipse falls in your chart, uh, check out astrologyheals.com for a mini reading. Um, very affordable, quick way to get a recording from me on where this eclipse falls in your chart or anything else you may have a question about. Um, it's, uh, it's a little taste of what astrology can reveal for you. And if you're looking for something more in depth, of of course, uh, I have appointments available for one-on-one -on -one sessions as well. So check all of that out at astrologyheals.com. Thank you so much for being here. If you like this content, don't forget to hit the subscribe button because I am here every day with Astrology for Unshakable Self-Care, um, pointing out what the planets are bringing us anchoring you in the bigger picture of the themes and qualities and energies of the times that we're in from day to day. All right. Thank you so much for being here and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.